What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today we have the VIP here, the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, the new AMD CPU with the enormous L3 cache. And well, I have three slides, very important slides, but this video will be quick. So now we are going to, I'm going to show you all the numbers and then we do some consideration, but because there are some points that need to be discussed. So without any further ado, let's get straight to the point. And boom, I know, this chart is pretty brutal. The massive L3 cache in an XMP fight is no match for any CPU in the market right now. And this is a very strong point for AMD, but uh, we'll talk uh, more about that uh, later. Now, let's level a bit uh, the playing field here. With a proper memory tuning, the 5800X3D doesn't gain much, well, 1 FPS. Uh, in the meantime, all the others have a nice bump, but there's more to do. Yes, the CPU OC and some tweaks. And this is the final chart. Everything is pushed to the highest point I was able to, always within safe daily limits. The 12900K is still the king here. And with better RAM, I'm pretty sure it will do even better since overclocking now is useless and the RAM is still a big uh, bottleneck. The 5800X 3D though is holding a steady second position. I tried various uh, forms of overclocking or tweaking, but uh, being OC locked, uh, there isn't much uh, we can do here. Interesting to mention is the 12600K that even with the DDR4, it delivers big numbers and for the price is something remarkable. And all the others, sadly, they are now behind uh, quite a bit. But guys, uh, look at the FPS, uh, they are still great. And I mean, uh, very great. And now let's discuss it a bit, because you know, when you buy a CPU, you have to consider many, many other stuff. Looking at the, the charts, uh, you know, you see big numbers and say, oh, I want that CPU, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, my game will be like flying, but you know, like motherboard, memory, and socket. Talking about socket, as you well know, AM4 is at the end of the line. So this will be probably be the, the last uh, CPU uh, AMD will release for AM4, because now there will be AM5 with DDR5 and so on. So you have to be careful if, if you want to, to, to make a new build based on this. I mean, if I have like a 3600 with a decent motherboard, I will probably see this as my next upgrade because I change only the CPU. I leave everything untouched, even if I have a you know, bad memory kit because this is not affected much by memory speed. So even if I have a, like an entry, an entry level build, this will be a great choice to bring some performance out of it. But you have to know that if you do this upgrade, then you have to change everything anyway in a couple of years. Okay, so with Intel, if they will keep uh, the same socket, if they will keep the same chipset, uh, if you buy something like the 12th generation now, especially with DDR5, probably you will have like Raptor Lake uh, as an upgrade uh, that will hopefully will be better maybe than Zen 4, you never know. So you have more an upgrade path defined. With this, you upgrade with this CPU and you're done. So this is a, uh, for me, a big consideration that needs to be made. So if you have an actual AM4 uh, build right now that is decent, this is probably the most logical choice because you don't have to change anything except the CPU. Just uh, you dismount the, the cooler, you place the new CPU and done. Okay. If you have to build a new system, then I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, suggest this CPU because honestly with the performance that uh, like the 12600K have especially with DDR4 you just need to to change a CPU and motherboard and for for the price of this CPU you will have a good DDR4 motherboard and a 12600K so the performance are quite similar we are talking about really 200 fps with the 1% low of 150 fps and even like in battleground or a stressful situation you will have a CPU that is really performing probably at the limit of your GPU because now I'm testing with uh, the 3019 Kimping with a custom BIOS. So probably you will have uh, a, a GPU bottleneck situation way before the GPU bottlenecks uh, kicking. 
that being said, I have to say that this is a great CPU. I cannot say otherwise. But keep in mind the consideration I just made. Uh, in the next week, I will try to compare this CPU with the 12th generation Intel pushed because uh, I see around a lot of reviews uh, and they use mainly XMP. And especially for DDR5, uh, if you leave XMP and you don't touch the sub timings, uh, you don't make that CPU you know, uh, show their true potential. But I will try to make some broader comparison, not only World of Warcraft, so I, I can try to fit some productivity suite, um, but other games uh, like multi-threaded games, uh, games that have a lot of uh, uh, memory readings, stuff like that. So for today is everything. I know it's a short video, but I guess that you have pretty solid information to, to, to deal with. And uh, well, stay tuned and see you in the next one.